Hello everyone. Welcome to the English class. In this class, we are going to learn the chapter Post Early for Christmas. It is a beautiful, a humorous story. Actually, it's a one act play which depicts uh, some incidents that took take place uh, in a post office. Okay, so Post Early for Christmas is a one act play written by R. H. Wood and it is the first chapter in the fifth unit. Okay. Then, um, read and reflect. It is said that laughter is not devoid of an element of pain. Is humor always completely innocent and harmless? Laughter is not always devoid of pain. Sometimes there may be pain for some other people. You may find it uh, uh, something like uh, um, all the incident, you may find it inducing laughter. But for some other people, it may be a difficult situation, right? Uh, we have seen so many people falling down and we unknowingly will break into laughter, right? For that person, it's a painful situation and at the same time for you, uh, you feel like laughing, right? So it's said that laughter is not devoid of an element of pain. Is humor always completely innocent and harmless? Is uh, laughter or is uh, humor completely innocent and, and harmless? Is it at the cost of creating inconvenience to others at least at times? At times, the humor situation, the humorous situation creates uh, some problematic situation for others, right? The read the one act play and make an assessment. Okay, let's read this one act play. It's funny and you'll find it uh, interesting, right? Okay, let's see what happens. Before that, let's know something about the author R. H. Wood. R. H. Wood, a British dramatist, is chiefly remembered for his one act play Post Early for Christmas. So he is deeply remembered, so this must be his masterpiece, his work, the great work for him, post early for Christmas. His plays are well known for simplicity of language, dramatic settings and subtle presentation of stock characters. So here in this play we can see a lot of characters, so many characters and he creates so many different uh, varieties of situations where, which uh, induce a love, right, which, uh, which cause, which uh, uh, force us love. The action of the play takes place inside a small post office in an English village. So the action, the settings of this play is a small um, post office where all the incidents take place and centers around a parcel that is mistaken for a time bomb. And the whole incident in this uh, one act play centers around a parcel which is mistaken for time bomb. Some people think that the parcel contains time bomb and without much thought, they um, jump to some conclusion and they do this and that which create situations which force you a love. Okay, let's see. Okay, first early for Christmas characters, a young lady assistant, the assistant in the post office, Mrs. Smith, Mrs. Jones, a deaf old gentleman, a farmer, a fussy old lady, Mrs. Higgins, Bertie, her son, he, he, Mrs. Higgins' son, a foreign tourist, a policeman. These are the characters in this one act play. Okay, scene, a post office with posters reading post early for Christmas. Okay, so you must have noticed all the things. What are you, what do you have to take care of when you prepare a one act play, right? In the beginning you have seen after the title, it, the characters' names have been listed. And after that you have to talk about the scene, the situation, the settings, right? Okay. Then what happened? The, what is the scene? A post office with posters reading post early for Christmas. Right, so it's a post office and a um, poster is there pasted there in the post office read uh, post early for Christmas because Christmas is coming as, as of now, right? Uh, Christmas is narrowing close, coming close and uh, you, you must have uh, uh, parcels to post as gift to your nearby ones. So if you have something to post, post this early so that it can be delivered to your near ones without any damage. Otherwise, if you get late, uh, the hurry that creates, uh, the hurry make, uh, may uh, defect, the hurry may affect your uh, parcel. And Okay, that's, that's why it said post early for Christmas. Assistant, assistant talks, my, what a busy day it was for me yesterday. I didn't have a minute's rest all day. So it was a very busy day for me yesterday. I didn't have even a single minute. What? Which Christmas? Nearly here and people sending parcels and cards. Christmas is so close and people are sending parcels and cards. 
And what funny people there are in this world to be sure. Oh, what funny people. There are different types of people. Oh my God. Only the other day a man came into my post office and said, please could you tell me where I could get a stamp? Ah, that's fun. The other day a man came to the post office and he asked the assistant, could you please tell me where can I get a stamp? Where else will he get a stamp? It is from the post office itself, right? But he's, he does not know where it is to be found or he may not know that the place where it has reached is a post office, right? Um, where I could get a stamp. Of course, at first I thought he was playing a joke on me. At first I thought he was just kidding me. Then there was the old man who couldn't see very well. Uh, then he was an old man, he, he couldn't see very well. He puts his glass on the counter and said, uh, this is another man, another man comes, is oh no, an old man, and he just removed his glass and put there on the counter and said, a pint of beer please, miss, a pint of beer. He thought it was a bar instead of a post office, he thought it was a bar and he is, um, or he, he gives the order to uh, for a pint of beer. So I gave him a dozen penny, dozen penny stamps instead. So normally in post office they do not sell beer. Then instead she just gave him a dozen of dozen penny stamp. She opens a book of stamps. Oh, here is my first customer. So th these were the case the day before. And let's see what happens today. She opens her book uh, of stamps. Oh, here is my first customer. Mrs. Smith enters. Now Mrs. Smith comes. Mrs. Smith, good morning, Miss. Cold, isn't it? Normally, at the time of Christmas, it is cold, right? Uh, it's uh, December, it's winter. So normally, it must be um, misting. It must be, uh, uh, must be frost will be there, and it is cold season. Cold, isn't it? Assistant, yes, certainly it is. It looks as though we shall be having a snow for Christmas. Ah, yeah, but by looking at this climate, this weather, I think for Christmas we will have uh, snow. We will uh, snow falling will be there for our Christmas. Mrs. Smith, I hope we don't. But I don't want uh, snow falling there. I hope we don't. Snow is so bad for my rheumatism. You know, last Christmas I had it so badly that I couldn't enjoy myself at all. So I don't want snow falling in the coming. Uh, Christmas because last Christmas I we had snow falling and I couldn't enjoy you know I have the problem of rheumatism rheumatism you all must be knowing uh, some uh, disease that um, yeah, and the cold is, uh, atmosphere is just an enemy for this because you can't walk properly you can sit properly right you will have pain on either side of your body okay so she doesn't want it uh, because last uh, last Christmas they had uh, snow very badly that she couldn't enjoy it at all. Assistant, let's hope it doesn't snow then. Yeah, then let's hope for the best. It, it won't happen. What can I do for you, Mrs. Smith? Okay, what can I do for you? Mrs. Smith, a book of stamps, please, and a postal order for half a crown. Then please give me a, a few stamps and uh, there is a postal order of half a crown. Assistant, no parcel for me to weigh. So didn't you bring the parcel? Isn't there the parcel with you? I have to weigh before I charge you, right? Mrs. Smith, good gracious. No, I have sent all my presents and cards. Uh, I believe in posting early for Christmas. Yeah, yes, no, there is no more parcels for me. I have already sent them, right? Good gracious. No, I have sent all my presents and cards. Everything I have already sent. I believe in posting early for Christmas because I believe in posting early. Why should I wait until to the until to the last moment? I just posted everything before itself. Assistant, I wish more people would do that. It's no wonder parcels are damaged in the last minute rush. Oh, I wish most of the people, more people should do this. If people do like this, if people send their parcel earlier, they, then it will reach its destination without any harm, right? Without any um, defect. Then what happens when we, all the people come together in the last minute in the rush, uh, the parcels get damaged, right? In the last minute rush. There you are, Mrs. Smith, your stamps and your postal order. Then, okay, here you go. Here you go, your stamps and your postal order. She hands over the stamp and the postal card. Okay. Mrs. Smith, thank you, Miss. Hello, Mrs. Jones. How are you? So, Mrs. Jones comes towards them, right? I haven't seen you for a long time. Are you keeping well? Oh, for a long time, I haven't seen you. Are you keeping well? Are you okay? Are you fine? Mrs. Jones moves to the counter. And a deaf old gentleman enters, stands at the back, peering at a huge shopping list. Right. So 
So Mrs. Jones uh, moves to the counter. Then a deaf old gentleman, another character comes, enters and stands at the back. He stands back, peering at a huge shopping list in his hand. He has a huge shopping list and he was peering closely looking at the uh, shopping list. Mrs. Jones, so uh, Mrs. Jones responds to Mrs. Smith. Uh, Smith's question, how are you? Are you keeping well? I am very well. Thank you. Have you finished your Christmas shopping yet? Have you finished your Christmas shopping? So uh, usually in, in connection with the celebration, we people do shopping, right? We ha will have to buy things. Uh, we'll have to purchase clothes, right? And uh, we will usually we prepare good food for the day. Then we'll have a special purchase, right? So have you finished your purchase for the day? I'm still in the middle of mine. I have been finished that of mine. I am still in the middle. I have to do some more purchase. I have to do some more shopping. Mrs. Smith, I have posted my cards and presents. Then she said, yeah, as part of my uh, Christmas, uh, busy, as part of my Christmas activities, I have parceled my uh, cards and presents. I have posted my cards and presents. Mrs. Jones hands some large parcels to the assistant who weigh them. Then Mrs. Jones hands over a large parcel to the assistant for weighing. Okay, Mrs. Jones, you are lucky. I don't want these presents damaged. Miss, so please see that they are handled very carefully. Then Mrs. Jones said, you are very lucky. You have already did it. And she asked the assistant, I don't want these presents damaged. I don't want to get it damaged, Miss. So please see that they are handled very carefully. So please, uh, be careful that my parcels are handled carefully. Assistant, we'll do our best, madam. Although it would have been better if they had been posted last week. Yes, ma'am, we will do our best. But if you had posted it last week, it would have been even better. Right. Okay. Mrs. Jones, when I post my Christmas present, it's my own affair. So look at the change in people's attitude. Uh, Mrs. Um, The change in the attitude of people, right? Mrs. Smith was so polite and she said, I have posted all my cards and parcels before itself. And in her case, Mrs. John, it's my, yeah, it's just my case. It's my own affair. I, I will decide when I have to post things, right? Uh, when I post my Christmas presents, it's my own affair. You just don't poke your nose in my case, right? Assistant politely, yes, madam. That will be 10 and 6 pence altogether. Yes, that's your case. I don't want to uh, uh, poke my nose in your case. It's 10 pounds and 6 pence. That will be 10 and 6 pence together. 10 and 6 pence. Mrs. Jones hands her the money. Thank you, madam. Then Mrs. Jones gives her the money. The assistant, uh, thank. Mrs. Jones joins Mrs. Smith away from the counter. Then they come out of the counter. The deaf old gentleman comes to the assistant. Now, uh, the deaf old gentleman comes. Can I serve you, sir? Then uh, the assistant asks, can I serve you, sir? What can I do for you, sir? Gentleman, no, thank you. I have, all, I have only come for me old age pension. May I serve you, sir? The assistant asks, no, thank you. But it's strange. No, I don't want any service from you. And still he says, I have only come for me old age pension. I have come here to get my old age pension. Pension, right? Me means my. Okay, so that's what the assistant asked. Can I do you something? But he simply said no because he's deaf. He does not, but he does not behave like a deaf man, right? He believes himself that he is very okay with his sound. He has got a good hearing. But what happens? The other, only the others understand he is having a bit deafness, right? Okay, assistant, I see. Have you your book? Have you brought your book? For pension, there will be book with you, right? Have you your book? Gentlemen, pardon? Sorry, I didn't get you. Can you please repeat what you said? Pardon? Assistant, I said, did you bring your book? Did you bring your pension book with you? Gentlemen, of course, I didn't bring me cook. No, I didn't bring my cook. Actually, the assistant is asking for the book, but the deaf man mishears it to be cook. No, I didn't bring my cook. Me, wife does all me cooking. My wife does all my cooking. It's my wife who does all the cooking for me. I don't have a cook. He just mishears, but he doesn't uh, understand that he misheard, right? Okay. 
assisted with great patience. So, so far, by now you must have understood that, that she's assisted is having a lot of patience, right? So, with great patience, uh, she doesn't get infuriated, just with a great patience. I'm afraid you didn't hear me, hear what I said. I'm afraid you didn't hear what I said. You misheard me, right? Gentlemen, bad. You, you didn't hear what I said. She said, said, but he heard bad. Gentlemen, bad. Who ought to be in bed? I'm not as young as I was, but I'm still healthy. You say I'm ought to be in bed? Who is ought to be in bed? I'm not as young as I was, but I'm still not that old. He says, I'm not that young, but still I have, I'm not that old. I'm still healthy. Don't you be so impudent, young lady. Don't be so impudent. Don't show much disrespect to elder person. I'm not that old. I'm healthy still. Assistant, I'm afraid you didn't hear what I said. I said. She just, she again clarifies, you didn't hear me what I said. I said, I said. Gentlemen, Ted, who says I'm called Ted? Are you trying to tell me my name, my own name? Ted? Oh, you are teaching me my name? Who said I'm called Ted? Uh, are you trying to tell me my own name, young woman? Me names Sam and all I have come for me pension. My name is Sam and all I have come for is for my pension. Right. So don't call me Ted. Now, I, uh, assistant, I know, but have you brought your book with you? But if I have to give you your pension amount, I should get your book. Have you brought it? Have you brought your book with you, gentlemen? Now look here, young woman. Don't you start this cook business again. Look, young woman here. Don't start the cook business again. I have already told you I don't have a cook. All my cookings have been done by my wife. Assistant loudly. Not cook, but book. So she's slowly, gradually getting angry. You know, that happens with people, right? She just, she still keeps quiet. She, she still maintains her patience and she says, um, not cook, but book. Gentlemen, oh, you want me book? Oh, you want my book? Now he got. Why did you say so in the first place, instead of talking all about this cook nonsense? Oh, you could have asked for my book in the first itself, right? Why did you talk all this uh, cook and all other nonsense things? You could have asked for you the book first itself. He fumbles in his pockets. He just check in his pockets. Assistant, thank you, sir. Okay. He turns to Mrs. Smith and Mrs. Jones. The, now, uh, the old gentleman, the gentleman turns towards Mrs. Smith and Mrs. Jones. A bit nippy, ladies, a bit uh, cold, right? Mrs. Smith, smiling kindly. Yes, isn't it? Yeah, yes, isn't it? Assistant, there you are, sir. She hands over the amount. Gentlemen, thank you, miss. Thank you. He mumbles. He, the compliments of the season to you, the compliments, she, he grades the lady. Uh, conveys the compliments. The compliments of the CCT assistant. I beg your pardon, sir. Then assistant didn't get it completely right. Then she, she wants him to repeat. Gentlemen, I thought you were a bit deaf, miss. Good morning. Ah, now he says, I thought you were a little bit deaf. Actually, the man, the gentleman is a bit deaf, but he doesn't realize. He just thought that the other one, the assistant is a bit deaf. Assistant, he says, I'm deaf. Well, I like that. He says, I'm deaf. I like that. The deaf old gentleman stays counting his money. The fussy old lady enters quickly. Then uh, he stays there and he counts his money to ensure how much has he got. Now a fussy old lady comes. Old lady, excuse me, my dear young lady, but I need advice. Excuse me, my lady, I need advice. So all these things happen in the uh, post office, right? Just remember. Assistant, certainly, madam, what is the trouble? Yeah, certainly I'll give you advice. What's the trouble? What's the problem with you? Old lady, well, it's about my cat. It's about my cat, Tiddles. I really don't know what to make of her. She used to be such a big eater, but lately she has gone off her food. Uh, it's about my cat, Tiddles. I really don't know what to make of her. I don't know what to do with 
right? She used to be such a big eater. She used to eat a lot, you know, but lately she has gone off her food. But nowadays she doesn't show that much interest in food. She just go away from the food. I don't know what to do. Can you please give me advice? Assistant, oh, I'm sorry. Have you seen a vet? I'm sorry. Have you seen a vet? Have you seen a veterinary doctor? Oh, lady, you see she has hurt her paw. You, you see, she has hurt. She has some kind of wound on her paw. Poor thing. And I think it has upset her. I really don't know what to do. Uh, I think because of that, because of the uh, hurt on her paw, uh, that might be the reason, I think. Uh, I really don't know what to do. What to do with her. Anyway, she doesn't take her food in a proper way. Assistant, try putting antiseptic on the paw. Then if she has some uh, hurt on her paw, just put some antiseptic on the paw. Oh, lady, could you let me have some, please? Oh, that's fine. Then can you please give me some? Assistant, try the chemist, madam. Then the old fussy lady thought this post office to be a chemist shop, right? A pharmacy, right? Try the chemist, madam. This is a post office. Then she thought it, it's a veterinary a hospital or a um, chemist shop or a pharmacy. And she came complaining about her pet's illness, right? Oh lady, oh dear, I must have made a mistake. Isn't this the clinic for sick animals? Then she says, oh, I must have been, I have must have made a mistake. Isn't this a clinic for sick animals? I thought it is to be. Assistant, no, the animal clinic is at the end of the road. No, this is not. This is a post office and animal clinic is at the end of this road. Oh lady, I'm so sorry to have you to have troubled you. I'm really sorry. I can't go away without buying something from your lovely post office. So anyhow, I came here, so I can't leave this place without buying something from your post office. Now let me see. Yes, I know. I'll buy a two penny, half penny stamp. Two penny, um, half penny stamp. Then she needs to uh, stamp half penny and penny. They are so pretty, aren't they? Then looking at the stem, she says, they are so pretty, aren't they? And it may be very useful for this Christmas. And uh, I think this, these stems will be very useful for this Christmas. The gentleman to the old lady, excuse me, lady, but I know something about cats. Perhaps can I help, can I help you? They stand talking. Then the gentleman interferes and he says, excuse me, I think something about cats. Can I help you? Then enter farmer Mrs. Higgins and Bertie. Then now the other characters come, the farmer, Mrs. Higgins, and Bertie. Bertie means Mrs. Higgins' son. Farmer, good morning, miss. How much, please? He puts a parcel on scales. He comes to um, send a parcel, and he directly places the parcel on the scale, and he asks, how much, miss? How much is it? Assistant, one and nine pence, please. One and nine pence. Farmer, laughing. Have you had any bombs in the post? Yeah. Have you had any bombs in the post? Have you got any bomb, time bomb like that in the post? As parcels? Assistant got uh, confused. Bomb? Bombs you mean? Farmer, yes. Look at the paper this morning. Yeah, I saw in this paper today, this morning, he, he wrote it. Bombs found in post office. Bombs found in post office. Scotland Yard has issued a warning that a time bomb disguised as a Christmas parcel was discovered in a London post office. So a time bomb was found in a post office, disguised, covered just like a Christmas parcel, and it was there in the newspaper. Any suspicious looking parcel should be reported at once to the local police station. So any suspicious looking parcel, if you find any parcel to be suspicious, just inform the nearby police station so that they can take over the situation. Okay. Assisted, but how can you tell it's a time bomb? But how can you understand looking at the parcel? It, it contains a time bomb. Farmer, they usually begin to tick just before they go off. Yeah, that's so easy. He just give uh, some uh, information that uh, the time bomb, they begin to tick, make some tick, tick sound. Just before they go off, just before they explode, uh, they will give you some sounds like this. So if any of your parcels start making funny noises, you'll know what to do, right? So if any of your parcel, you have got so many parcels here, and if you find any of this parcel making that tick tick sound, just understand what to do, right? You will know what to do, right? Mrs. Jones, Mr. Brown, isn't it from the farm? So you are from the farm, you are a farmer, right? Mrs. Jones asks. Farmer, oh, Mrs. Jones, I didn't recognize you. 
oh, is it Mrs. Jones? I didn't recognize you when I saw you for the first time. Yeah, I'm from the uh, farm. Farmer Brown talks to Mrs. Jones and Mrs. Smith. Then they talk, right? M uh, Farmer and Mrs. John and Mrs. Smith. Bertie, an untidy little urchin, stares at Farmer Brown and his mother, a large, loud woman, goes to the counter. Bertie, an untidy little urchin, Bertie, uh, untidy, not clean, right? And little urchin, little naughty boy, stares at farmers, Farmer Brown. He looks closely at Farmer and his mother, a large, loud woman, his mother is a large, loud woman, goes to the counter and he slowly goes to the counter. Mrs. Higgins, come on, Bertie, stop stirring, it's rude. So, M Mrs. Higgins is a large and a loud woman, right? She has got loud voice, you know. And Mrs. Higgins, come on, Bertie, stop stirring, it's rude, don't tell like that, it's rude, it's not a good habit. Bertie, okay, mom, Mrs. Higgins, and don't call me ma, don't call me ma, Bertie, right, you are ma, I mean, all right, you are ma. I mean, mom. Right, Mrs. Higgins. I want a book of stamps and a money order for two pounds eleven shillings and five pence. Then Mrs. Higgins uh, asks the assistant. She wants a book of stamps and a money order for two pounds eleven shillings and five pence. Assistant, here is the book of stamps, madam. And would you please fill in this form for the money order? So. Uh, here you go you can have this um stamp a book of stamps and if you want to get a money order please just fill in this form okay money order mrs higgins as she fills in the form she is filling the form wipe your nose bertie uh, she's he's an untidy urchin right as we said so wipe your nose bertie bertie ma i want i want sanjin ma i want sanjin he, he wants the engine train by which he can play right then he wants an engine. Mrs. Higgins, be quiet, buddy. They don't sell them here. Be quiet. Don't make noise. They don't sell engine here. It's just a post office, right? This, this year is a post office. This is. This year is a post office. Here is. This is a post office. That's what she means, right? She hasn't got good language. That's why. Bertie, I know, ma, but they sell engines next door. I see them. I know, ma, they do not sell engines here. But they sell it next door. In the nearby shop, they sell engine. Right. I see them. I saw them. Right. I see them. Mrs. Higgins, what shocking language, Bertie? What shocking language do you have? Don't they teach you how to talk at school? Don't they teach you how to talk? You, are, you have been going to school, right? Don't they teach you how to talk? Now just you say it properly. Just tell it properly. I see them. Indeed. Is it correct? I see them. I see them. Is it correct? Bertie, I solved them, ma. I solved. Not see them, ma. I solved them, ma. Mrs. Higgins, that's better. Oh, this one. Comparatively better. That's better, Bertie. She gives the form to the assistant. Then she, actually, uh, Mrs. Higgins also doesn't have a good language, right? You can see, um, this year is a uh, post office. This is. She is also doesn't have the language. Still, she is very conscious and worried about Bertie's language. Right, and uh, he, she gives the form to the assistant. Assistant, thank you, madam. Mrs. Higgins, stop fiddling with those scales, Bertie. She's always shouting at Bertie, you know, don't do that, don't do that, don't call like that, don't look like that. Right, and always shouts at Bertie, stop fiddling with those scales, Bertie, don't stop playing with that scales. Those scales to assistant, oh, he's a naughty lad, I don't know what to do with him. My son, he's a naughty lad, and I'm clueless. I, I don't know what to do with him. Right. Assistant, will that be all, madam? Just that, madam? Only this? Mrs. Higgins, I think so. Put your cap on straight and pull your socks up. Bertie, put your cap straight. Pull your uh, socks straight. Bertie, can I have a ice cream, mom? Can I have a ice cream, mom? Mrs. Higgins, well, what's next? I would like to know. Ice cream in this weather. Oh. Well, what's next? Only ice cream and engine? Anything more? I would like to know. I want to know what else do you have? Ice cream in this weather already. It is, it's snowing, right? And in this weather, you need ice cream, right? I've never heard of such a thing. All right, then. If you are a good boy. Okay, anyway, I'll give you. I'll buy an ice cream for you if you are a good boy. Assistant, is there anything else, madam, that I can do for you? Is there anything that I can for, do you for, ma'am? Anything? Anything more do you expect me to do? Mrs. Higgins, 
There was something else I wanted. Can you think what it was, buddy? Then she, she has forgotten something, right? Then she uh, seeks help from Bertie. There was something else I wanted. One more thing, I think. Uh, can you think what it is? What it was, Bertie? Can you think? Bertie, an uh, engine, mom? An engine, mom? Uh, yes, it must be the engine, right? Mrs. Higgins, of course it wasn't. Don't be so silly, Bertie. No, it wasn't. I, I didn't think of buying an engine. Don't be so silly, Bertie. Bertie then, ice cream, mom? It must be the ice cream. Mrs. Higgins, I know. I want to draw some money from my national savings. Oh, I, I don't need your help. I remembered. I need to draw some money from my national savings. Bertie, to buy me an engine with? Oh, are you drawing money to buy me an engine with? Mrs. Higgins, you mind your own business, Bertie Higgins. Mind your own business. Assistant, may I have your book, please? Fill in this form. Okay, you can withdraw money. Can, may I have your book? Please fill in this form. The foreign tourist enters. Now, another character enters. A foreign, foreign tourist. He's dark and sinister. Dark color, sinister also, black complex, right? Dressed in black and speaks with an accent, right? Uh, he dressed in black and speaks with some uh, special accent. Tourist, good morning. Assistant, good morning, sir. Can I help you? Assist a tourist. I wish that this parcel be sent to my front. Yeah, I, I need this parcel to be sent to my friend. Assistant, certainly, sir. May I weigh it for you? Certainly, sir. May I weigh it for you? Tourist, laying his gloves on the counter. So he was in gloves. He just take a move and place it there on the counter. Good. Thank you so well. Good. Thank you so well. That's his uh, accent, you know. It is actually good. Thank you well. Then his accent is good. Thank you well. Assistant. I wish more people would pack their parcels as well as this. My goodness, how heavy it is. It will cost you five shillings. Then taking the parcel in her hand, assistant says, I wish more people would pack their parcels as well as this. You have packed it beautifully. I think all the other people should follow your path in this case. My goodness, how heavy it is. It will cost you five shillings. It is so heavy and you will have to pay five shillings. Taurus, thank you so much. He walks away, hesitates and returns. Then he thanking uh, assistant, he walks away and he hesitates and returns. He goes a, a few steps and he comes back. I regret that I could not have you say post early for Christmas, but I have arrived in your country only a few days ago. I regret that I could not have you say post early for Christmas. You so you have uh, pasted a poster here saying post early for Christmas. I regret I couldn't do it because I came only a few days before to your country. Right. So I regret I couldn't do, but I have arrived in your country only a few days ago. Assistant, if it is a present, I think it will be in time, sir. Then if it is a present, uh, it will be in time, it will reach the destination, the person in, in time, sir. Tourist, it's a present, a special kind of present. But tell me how long before it goes to the general post office to be sorted? Yeah, it's... It is a present, a special kind of present. And but tell me how long before it goes to the general post office to be sorted. So when will when will you take this to the general post office to be sorted? So after from uh, this after collecting things from people, they will be taken to the general post office from where they will sort as per the place and will be carried right. So when will it be taken to the general post office? Assistant, it will be collected at midday. These things will be collected at the, at midday. Tours, that's good. And they will take great care of my parcel there, yes? And there in the general post office, they'll take uh, much care of my parcel, right? So it's, it's a great surprise for my friend. So won't they take great uh, care of my parcel? Assistant, yeah, yes. Tourist, good. And it will not be opened, no? And it will not be opened. They won't open my parcel, right? No? Assistant, yes. I mean, no. Uh, yeah, it will not be opened, no? Yes, uh, it will not be open. Yes, I mean, no, they won't be open. They won't open. Tours, so, and you don't think it will be stolen, yeah? And you know, uh, it won't be. And you don't, don't think it will be stolen. Nobody will steal it, right? Assistant, oh yes, that's it. Uh, no, I mean, nobody will steal. Tours, that's good. That's good. I wish you good day. I wish you good day, right? He goes out leaving his gloves behind. 
and uh, wishing her good day. He leaves the counter, leaving his uh, gloves behind. Assistant, what a strange man. He made me shudder. He made me shudder. I suppose he is one of the, those foreign tourists. I think he, is, he doesn't belong to this country. He's one of those tourists. I wonder what's in the parcel. He seemed very anxious about it. I wonder what's there in the parcel. Why, is he, why does he look so anxious about his parcel? Bertie goes to the parcel and looks at it. Looks at it, right. Bertie goes near the parcel and he looks at the parcel. Mrs. Smith to farmer. Now, they are standing there, Mrs. Smith, Mrs. John and farmer. They are t standing and uh, talking and Bertie is busy with other things. He, he walks here on their place with the fiddles with their um, um, scale and stares at people and now he wonder, could you really manage a turkey for Christmas, Mr. Brown? Uh, you can you can have a, a turkey, a turkey for Christmas uh, to make your di dish, a special dish. Farmer, yes, I think I can spare one. Uh, yes, I think I can have one turkey, Mrs. Smith. Thank you very much, Mr. Brown. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, then um, Mrs. Smith is actually asking uh, the farmer to give her a turkey so that she can uh, make her Christmas special, right? Then thank you very much, Mr. Brown. Mr. Hick, Mrs. Higgins, Bertie, come away from that parcel at once. Come here. Don't go there, Bertie. But Ma, Mrs. Higgins, Bert Higgins, you will have no engine this Christmas and nothing else if you don't come here this very minute. Bertie, if you don't come this very minute, you won't have any engine or any ice cream for this Christmas, Bertie. But Mom, listen to this parcel. So he was uh, lingering around the parcel, right? So just listen to this parcel, Ma. Mrs. Higgins, I'll do no such thing, and neither, neither will you. She says, I will, I will, I'll do no such thing. Actually, she means I won't do such things, right? I will do no such things, and neither will you. You also won't do things like that. But Higgins, assistant, here, Sonny, what's the matter? Here, Sonny, come here, son. What's the matter? Assistant asks. Bertie, please, miss, it's this parcel. It ain't of making a funny noise. Please, miss, it is this parcel. It's ain't of making a funny noise. It's ain't of making. Mrs. Higgins, ain't of indeed? Ain't of indeed? Where's your grammar? So what he meant was not understood. Ain't of indeed? Where's your grammar? Where's your grammar? Bertie, she's at home uh, watching the television. She's at home. Actually, Mrs. Higgins asked, where's your grammar, right? Grammar, then she, she just stopped, where's your grammar? Then Mrs. Bertie took it for grandma, right? Then, ah, she's at home, ma'am. She, she's at home, ma, watching the television. Mrs. Higgins, wait till I get you home. You cheeky little monkey. You cheeky, impudent, disrespectful little monkey. Assistant, that's very strange. I could swear there was a ticking noise. Then she also examines and she finds there is some ticking sound from the parcel. Farmer, hey miss, I can hear a noise too. Yeah, I too can hear a noise. Mrs. Jones, so can I. Yeah, me too. Can you, Mrs. Smith? Do you hear any voice, Mrs. Smith? Mrs. Smith, yes, there is no doubt about it. Yeah, there is no doubt. There is, of course, a sound, a ticking sound. Gentlemen, what's going on here? Who can hear what? What's going on here? Who can hear what? He doesn't hear anything, right? He's deaf. So he asked, who can hear what here? Right. Old lady. Yes, indeed. I can hear a most peculiar sound. I wonder what it can be. Yes, I too can hear some special sound. What can it be? She asked. Farmer, I know what it can be. It's a time bomb. It's a time bomb. So he just came to the conclusion, just listening to the sound. It's a time bomb. Everybody, a time bomb? Where? Where is the time bomb? Farmer, I'll tell you where. In the parcel. I'll tell you. The time bomb is there. In the parcel. Oh, lady, excuse me. But what is that time bomb? What is the time bomb? What's the time bomb? Farmer, if we don't do something, you'll find out soon enough, ma'am. So if you don't know what's a time bomb, and if we are not doing anything uh, special, if we just remain the same way as we are, you definitely will understand what a time bomb is. You'll see when once it go off, right? So if you don't do something, you'll find out soon enough, ma'am, gentlemen. What's all the fuss about? What are you all talking about? Oh, lady, it's something about a time bomb. 
It's about a time bomb, gentlemen. Tom, Tom, who? He's deaf. He's partially deaf, and he can hear only one or two letters of what you speak, right? So as she said, it's a time bomb. He mishears it to be Tom. Tom, Tom, who? Farmer. We had better send for a policeman. So we, we had better send for a policeman. It's better to inform to the police station so that they can do something about it. All right. Mrs. Higgins, Bertie, go and fetch a policeman. Then Mrs. Higgins informs Bertie to go and fetch a policeman. Bertie goes out. Assistant, I'll take it outside. She goes to pick it up. Then assistant, she wanted to take the parcel outside and she goes to pick it up. Farber, no, leave it where it is before you blow us all up. Just leave it there before you blow all blow up all. Right. Because if, if you go and touch it, sometimes it will blow up. It may go off, right, and you will blow all, us all up. Assistant, but what shall I do? Then what else can I do? Can I leave it here, letting all the other parcel blast? Farmer, listen, I'm sure it's getting louder. Just listen to the voice. I'm sure that ticking sound is getting louder and louder. Assistant, yes, it is loud here. Yes, yes, it does. It it's, uh, hits louder. Farmer, take cover, everybody. Everybody take cover. Just hide behind somewhere. It is going to explode. They all hide. All of them hide somewhere. Gentlemen, oh, I see. Hide and seek. Then <laughs> gentlemen, he does not know what's happening. He doesn't hear any sound, right? Then he <laughs> thinks that. I see. Hide and seek. So you guys are playing hide and seek, right? Yet there are policemen followed by Bertie. Now a policeman comes followed by Bertie. Policeman, now then, what's going on here? What's going on here? What's the issue? Come on now, what's the idea? Hiding under the counter like that? Why are you hiding here? What's the idea? Oi, assistant, it's a time bomb, constable. Constable, it's a time bomb. There's a time bomb among the parcels. Policeman, Bert Higgins, have you been up to some more of your mischief? Bert Higgins, are you, were you playing some uh, tricks here? Some mischiefs here? Uh, have you been up to some more of your mischief? Have you played some mischiefs here in this uh, post office too? So Bert Higgins is very notorious, even the policemen know. And they know that he's a mischievous boy, right? So have you played any uh, prank here? Farmer, look here, constable, there is a time bomb in the parcel. Then he informs, uh, to the, informs the policeman that there is a time bomb in the parcel. Um, policeman, don't talk nonsense, sir. Don't talk nonsense. Farmer, very well. Then listen for yourself. Okay, then I'm not talking anything. You just listen for yourself. You just uh, mind your business. I, 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 want, I don't want to talk anything. Policeman, hmm. a loud ticking noise. Yeah, a loud ticking noise is there. Farmer, what did I tell you? That's what I said. There is a time bomb in the parcel, right? What did I tell you? Go and get a bucket of water, miss. The assistant goes out. Then the farmer informs, go out and get a bucket of water. Then the assistant goes out. Policeman, now look here, sir. You do your job and I'll do mine. Right, then the policeman interferes. Now the, it was the farmer who was the assistant to bring a bucket of water, right? Now the policeman interferes and he said, you just mind your business and I'll mind that of mine, right? I'll mind mine. Do your jobs and I'll do mine. He takes out his notebook. I'll take down a few details. Then he takes his notebook and he started to uh, take notes of something, right? <laughs> and it is the time when all the others are expecting the such a, a great explosion of the time bomb, right? I'll take down a few details. Mrs. Jones, don't you think it would be better to open it? Don't you think you, you have to open the parcel? The assistant enters with a bucket of water. Assistant comes with water. Assistant, here is a bucket of water, policeman. Now, don't panic. Don't be afraid. Don't get panic. I'm going to undo it. I'm going to undo this. A time bomb so he also without having much discussion much inquiry he also comes to the conclusion he believes the former that this parcel actually contains a um, time bomb then he's going to undo this uh, time bomb we'll soon get to the bottom of this we'll soon get this parcel to the bottom of this water right he begins to unwrap the parcel he started to unwrap the parcel remove the cover the foreign tourist enters now the foreign tourist enters right Tourist, excuse me, please, but I think I have left my gloves here. So it was him who left his gloves here, there, there in the uh, counter, right? Excuse me, please, but I think I have left 
my gloves here. Farmer, stop that man, constable. He brought the parcel. <clears throat> then farmer, pointing to the uh, tourist, asks the constable, stop that man. He brought the parcel here. Right, policeman, just a moment, sir. I like a word with you. Just a moment, please wait. I have to talk with you. The farmer holds the tourist's arm. Now the farmer comes and he holds the tourist arm. He holds it tightly so that uh, he can't run away, right? Tourist, why do you hold me, policeman? Is this your parcel? Then why do you hold me? Why do you hold me? The tourist asks the farmer. Then the policeman asks, is this your parcel, sir? The parcel they are going to unwrap. Is this your parcel? Tourist, what is it you do? What is it you do? What do you do with my parcel? No. What? Policeman, is this your parcel, sir? Because I'm going to undo it. Is this your parcel? And I'm going to undo it. Right. Tourist, what? It is you do. What are you doing with my parcel? Are you mad? Leave alone that parcel. Don't touch that parcel. Leave alone. Are you mad? Policeman, don't worry, sir. I'll soon get it open. Don't worry. I'll just, I'll get it open. Tourist, what's that? This nonsense. For what purpose? Why do you open my parcel? Policeman, that's what I want to know, sir. What is this nonsense? The, he asked, what is this nonsense? Then policeman said, that's what I want to know, sir. I want to know what nonsense is there in this parcel. Tourist, it is ticking. It is ticking, you fool. But now it has stopped. I am ruined. It is ticking. It's ticking, right? My parcel was ticking, you fool. But now it has stopped. But now the ticking has stopped. I am ruined. I got destroyed. Farmer, it stopped ticking. Look out, everybody. It's going off. Then it stopped ticking. Everybody, be careful! It's going, it's going off. It's going to explode. The policeman throws into the bucket. So as it stopped the ticking, the policeman threw the parcel into the bucket of water, and everybody dives for cover. And throwing this parcel into the water, everybody dives for cover to hide themselves from the uh, explosion. Tourist, you idiot! You'll be punished for this. You idiot! You'll be punished for this. The tourist takes it out of the bucket and holds up a large cloth. He just takes the parcel from the bucket and he takes the large cloak inside. Actually, the ticking sound came from the clock. When the clock works, you, you will hear the sound, right? So it was the sound of that ticking and the others thought it to be a time bomb and just for the purpose of undoing the time bomb, they threw it to the water, right? Assistant, good gracious, a clock, it is just a clock, tourist, all the way from Switzerland do I bring this beautiful clock and look at it, ruined. I took this clock from Switzerland to uh, give to my friend, to post for my friend and look at it, it's ruined, it's destroyed, I'll sue you all, I'll, I'll get all you punished, you blundering idiots, I'll never post anything in this country again. I will never post anything in this country. Post early for Christmas. I shall see the postmaster general about this. He goes on. Post early for Christmas. Huh? I shall see the post, post general. I shall see the postmaster general about this. I have to complain. I have to register a complaint against this. Assistant. Well, that's that. She puts on her coat. Oh, that's it. She puts on her coat. Policeman. Where are you off to, miss? Where are you leaving, miss? Assistant. I'm leaving the post office forever. I'm leaving this place. I'm, I'm not the right person to be here. I'm going down to the road to work at the animal dispensary. I just don't want to be here. I live and I work in the animal dispensary. Animals don't do such silly things. Animals that do not do such silly things like human beings. So for all the days she, she is having varieties of strange experiences, right? in her uh, post office so animals don't do such silly things good morning she walks out with her nose in the air she walks out proudly leaving her job in the post office so that's the one act play hope you enjoyed it right so uh, so many funny situations are there right that induce law for okay then uh, you must be remembering the title of our unit the lighter side so for each one the life is not all, as we usually say life is not always bed of roses right sometimes it is a path uh, sp uh, spotted with some kind of thorns right so for each dark side there is a bright side right so always concentrate on your lighter side that will give you more inspiration and that will motivate you to move on
right so lighter side means the side which is not that heavy right uh, that that doesn't uh, weigh much means that gives you some kind of hope expectation and that makes you move forward right so you will have to love you have to um, uh, make be merry uh, spend time with your family right rather than um, thinking was about something uh, worries that happen to you right so in this chapter you have come across a lot of, of funny situations and hope you enjoyed and in this unit there are some other chapters like crime and punishment which is an, a story written by an indian writer which is also very funny and a poem is there this is going to hurt just a little bit it's also funny so the whole chapter is uh, gives you space to love and enjoy right okay then um enjoy your life thank you for listening